Hello YouTube, it's Painter for Hire 1975 with you back again for another video. Um, I want to apologize on the last video I made. Um, basically, uh, my battery died on my camera. and Pretty much like a dumbass, I didn't check my battery before I started the video. So, it died. But anyway, I apologize. I was pretty much done with the video anyway. All I was getting ready to say was rate, comment, subscribe, but anyway, no big deal. Okay, here we are for part four of how to paint a resin bus without an airbrush, and when we last left off, left off we were putting in the uh, the darkening details. I actually, all I did here was I uh, whitened the eyes just because I needed something to contrast it to see if that's what I, if I, if I was happy with the with the color, so I think I am. We're going to continue. But today what we're going to do is we're basically just going to throw an oil wash on this. And then we're going to paint some of the details of the kit. And we're going to see how how things look from there. But basically what I did was I used an oil. I put some oil in a cup. And then I mixed it up with a turpenoid. Which is what I suggest using when you're using an oil wash. And, yeah, pretty much that's it. Uh, excuse me. Grab this real quick. Now, one thing you need to understand with dealing with oil washes, you, you really want don't want your wash too thick, but you don't want it too thin either. I mean, you just want to kind of test it on your paper towel to see how the consistency looks because sometimes you end up getting it's really difficult with oil washes it's really difficult to uh, to mix up the oil completely really well sometimes you may need to add more turpenoid you just want it to be kind of like just a, a thin layer of consistency you don't want it to be too thick but you don't want it to be too thin either all right what we're going to do, we're just going to layer, just going to just kind of just go over our paint job. And what this is doing is this is giving this a nice consistency base. Just kind of, don't worry if it runs because. Like I said, you want it to be thin, but all this is doing is giving, giving, giving you just want to give it a nice, consistent base coat of wash. But you don't want, like I said, you don't want to go too thick. You may, in some areas, you may go a little bit too thick. What this is going to do, this is going to actually give this more of a... I'm not exactly sure the word I'm looking for. I, I would say it's more of a sheen. This is going to give it a more of a sheen effect. But what it's going to do is it's going to actually, it's going to grab, gravitate in, inside those crevices and everything of the kit. And it's going to actually look really well done once, it, once you're finished with your wash. But you, like I said, you don't want to go too thick. Now, I suggest as you're doing your wash, on something like this, if this was a female kit, I'd probably leave this and just let it dry naturally and then kind of fade it in with an airbrush. But since I'm not using an airbrush with this model kit, what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of like blotting it. Just blotting it in. Because I don't want it to dry in different puddles. And that's a that's a very important thing when you're dealing with a, when you're dealing with doing oil washes. You got to make sure that your your wash is flowing consistently, but you also got to make sure that once it goes all over the place, that it's not getting in, making like little separate little puddles. Because sometimes that happens from time to time, and when you when that happens, what you want to do when that happens, what you want to do is you want to. Um, just blot it down and break those puddles up.
this is already starting to look good, much better. See? If you notice how it's kind of like varnished, burnished in a way. What actually I consider washes doing is I consider this actually more like a stain, staining effect. Like if you were going to stain your deck or a chair or, you know, something like that. This is kind of what the what the wash does is it gives it another another layer of realism and when you're painting these model kits you want them to be as real as possible even though the Crypt Keeper is not real but but we have seen the prop on television and you know it, it's just it just gives it another level one thing about uh, this particular model kit is it has a lot of nooks and crannies and, and crevices and there's there's a lot there's a lot for this kit to for the wash to hold to so that's a good thing it's definitely definitely a good thing I probably could have even added a little bit of burnt umber to this wash to make it a little more or less stark but what I'm I'm really liking the way this is this is looking this is just one of those let me see if I can get the fucking camera to see what I'm talking about see if you notice how how it's kind of sitting in the crevices that's what the effects you are looking for when you're dealing with a wash now this actually be a better this is what um more of a comparison okay look at the hands and look at the the face it it's completely different and that is what you want now i'm going to do the hands and what i will probably do even probably do is once I uh, that wash dries because that's another thing for the people who haven't seen my Han Solo video I, I did this to the Han Solo oil washes take a very long time to dry so what you want to do is you want to uh, let them dry or you can speed up the drying time with a hair dryer I will probably speed up the time with a hair dryer on this one. And just you just want it to have another you just want your piece to to kind of like match what you're doing to the face when you're like if you're doing this on I'm doing this on hands now, but if you were doing this on like legs or whatever. This this technique works with the uh, varnishing of the kit or and everything I, I would say this technique work can work on any female kit any girl kit uh, not girl kit but it, any type of kit it just doesn't matter it really does not matter the one thing though that I would suggest is figure out what you what you're what you're wanting it to to look like first and because some cases you don't need to wash I just have this I do it a lot because I just like the way oil washes look on top of uh, a piece it, to me it gives it a more a more finished it gives it a more finished look It's just, uh, like, for example, I did this a long time ago, but I used oil washes on his face, and he has a much more realistic, uh, face than, than, um, than it did on, on the actual Sideshow statue, because that was a Sideshow statue that I just repainted. Got it on eBay fairly cheap, and I was like, hey, I'll repaint this.
You know, just looking at this, I really like the way this is coming out. Uh, I like the way this color that I have done. I have a Jason model kit, and he has um, fr uh, from uh, Jason Voorhees, and he's unmasked, and you know he has his hands and stuff. And I kind of want to do it similar to this. I I really like the way this is coming, especially right here. I don't know if you can see this, but look how I darkened this because this is what I did with the hands. I darkened this, and then it just matches. It just you know contrasts as well with the hands. This is just to me a. Uh, this is coming out pretty freaking good. I must say. Guys, if you have any comments or, or questions, feel free to leave them. Uh, these these videos are for information use. These videos are for, you know, social. You know, if you have questions, whatever. Uh, I will say, I did get a message yesterday. Or, well, I didn't realize it. But, I'm assuming it was sent yesterday, but I didn't get it till this morning. Uh, the guy that wants me to paint the uh the mini bust for him uh this there's like four mini busts you have mentioned like Frankenstein a bride of Frankenstein and I think it was uh like Pretorius and the doctor I think I'm not sure I think that's what you said at this I if you can hold it off on the back burner I can do it I just can't do it until after February because I have some other things that I'm going to be doing. I got a contest that I got to get ready for. And um, I have a friend that's sending me. Which I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm getting a... Uh, this guy's a, a good friend of mine. I've been painting for him for years. And he's been like becoming like a really good friend of mine. And he's sending me a bust. Of the sh it's called Shield Maiden. It's uh, Lagatha from Vikings. Now, let me understand, let me tell you something. These busts that from these shows like Game of Thrones and and you know Vikings, they're more on the military side of things. They're not like resin garage kits, so they're small. You're talking one tenth scale, but it's a really nice looking bust, and he is sending that to me, and I'm gonna paint that for him. And, uh, I would love to do that on camera, but I'm not going to, because I just want to be able to concentrate and, and not have to worry about talking to the camera and stuff. But, yeah, it'll, it's, it'll look cool. I'll definitely, definitely before I'm finished, I will make a video posting about and showing you how it turned out. I definitely will do that. But, yeah, I can paint your stuff. You just got to give me... Until after February. I can't do it until after February. That's just... Unfortunately, that's when I'll have more free time. Okay. Now that we've done that, I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to pause the video, and then I'm going to get back with you guys. Okay, we're back. The oils have dried. I dried them with a hair dryer. Uh, one thing about drying them with a hair dryer is it does speed up the, the time. And I really wanted to just show you guys how it looks once it's dried. It's really hard to see. Just the camera. If you look, you can see that it's starting to really have more of a definition than it did before and that is what I am going for now I will lighten this I will lighten this and everything which is just the way I work I do a lot of back and forth so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add some color to the kit we're gonna basically just gonna kinda just to give it some contrast to lay against, we're going to we're going to just 
face his jacket in black. Don't worry if you get it on the hair. Because... I'm going to... It's the jacket, once I'm finished with it, it's going to look really rotty and, you know, it's not going to look like he just walked out of Mitchell's form or what, Michael's form or whatever, you know, it's not going to be looking all slick. Let's face it, Crypt Keeper's dead. He's got a lot of wardrobe problems. A lot of his clothing is is not probably got a lot of like moss and you know all kinds of issues. He doesn't wear the nice slick stuff. I don't think I've ever seen the Crypt Keeper wear this, but I when I first got this kit, and when I first saw it, I just, I, I actually was going to paint his jacket maroon, kind of like similar to the, the jacket that, that, um, was in Beetlejuice, that, uh, Michael Keaton wore, but I was, then again, I was like, you know, I don't know if that would work, so, I decided not to worry about it. Now, like I said, if I was doing this with an airbrush, I would be I would be airbrushing this base tone. But like I said, you can do this stuff with no airbrush. But I definitely. I definitely would recommend using an airbrush for two reasons. One, you get a much more, uh, you get a nicer uh, layer of paint because it's an airbrush and it's coming on, it's going a lot smoother and you're eliminating brush strokes and all that. And the most important reason, time. Airbrush is like, like using a Power Wagner to paint a house versus paint brushing it. You know, that's just the way it is. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This video is running a little bit longer than I want it to. I wanted to try and keep these about 15 to, to 17 or so minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to base everything in black that I want based in black. And I will come back with part 5 and I'll show you how I dry brush and, and make it look more rotty and rotten style. Alright, as always, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.